Can I now talk to the issue of how business deals with government and practical perspective. Now, Sue Foley, you are to come forward. Sue Foley is a very special person because she has been around. She's been the Chief of Staff of the Opposition from 2001 to 2003. She's been the Chief of Staff of TV3 News and she is currently the Director of Corporate Affairs at Westpac. So this woman has had a large amount of experience at the coalface. Come tell us how it's done. So. Thank you, May. I feel very humbled to be here today because I'm sure there's a lot of people here who could tell me rather than the other way around. But look, I'll just cover off a briefly a few ideas and a few thoughts. Commercial diplomacy are two words used more and more around governments and business. And while it is used more often in a foreign sense, it applies equally to the domestic scene as well. The one point so often forgotten in Auckland is that Wellington matters. And if you don't understand that fundamental first off, you do have problems sooner often rather than later. And I look back, going back several years ago, I look at Transrail. Transrail were concerned about what they saw as interference from government. So what did they do? They packed up and they moved to Auckland. Not only did they move to Auckland, they moved to the North Shore where there's not even a rail link. Where is Kiwi Rail today? It's back in Wellington. And I think that's just a really important point to remember. However, when dealing with politicians, be it central or local, business needs to remember there are two key points. All politicians want to win elections and they want solutions. They don't want problems. So when working with government, it's important to know what their priorities are and how you can be a part of the solution. I think few would argue currently the top of the list is the economy and the rebuild of Christchurch. So I will cover off just two case studies where but I believe as a business we have worked successfully with government around these two issues. One final point I'd also like to make is that don't ever underestimate how important real grounded information is to ministers. They have a lot of people often telling them what they want to hear but how often do they have people telling them what they really need to know? So for the economy, for us to be part of the solution, we actually needed to know what the issues were, and that is why we launched a project called Grow New Zealand. This took our CEO out of the office, and to me that's really important. You don't sit in an office and find out what's going on around this country. You get out, you go around the regions, and you listen. And listen, I'd like to put a capital, you know, black letters and really headline that. So we talked to a wide cross-section of people. We hosted 14 forums and engaged with 500 businesses and then met these findings against a survey of a further five, 900 businesses. We then had no problem engaging with government because we had real facts that we'd got from real people and they found this really helpful. No matter what party you were, we had information and we engaged from the highest level all around. The common threads from around the country were leadership, education and infrastructure. And we're now working on various initiatives. So this is ongoing. This gave us a reason to continue to engage with government. And this has also included a hui to look at answers around affordable housing. So this is business engaging right to the coalface of what's needed in this country. On to Christchurch, no one doubts the complexity of what government, both local and central, have to deal with. Businesses must be part of the solution. No one can expect the government to resolve this on their own. Courage is a word often used around Christchurch and it will be needed for many years to come as they go through a recovery period. In the aftermath of the February 22nd quake, good old Kiwi ingenuity was found. Businesses kept going. They were in kitchens, they were in garages, and of course, this only can happen in New Zealand, the back of Utes. But there had to be a better way. And so how could we help to keep businesses going, which was going to also help provide a solution for government? And it was our GM of marketing who actually came up with the idea of why don't we provide a place, no matter whether you're a customer or not, of Westpac that you could continue that business and all be under one roof. We looked around, there were no suitable buildings and with time being of the essence, so with the support of other key business partners, Fletcher's and Genai, we built one ourselves. 
There was no time for the usual lengthy building consent process. Consents were needed and eventually gained, but boundaries were definitely pushed. And the materials that were used were what I would call more wrap than wood, and think of the cloud up in Auckland. There were some extreme local challenges, but central government could see here was business wanting to help provide a solution with no strings attached. It has provided a home for many, and even for those still working from their homes, it's given them a place where they can meet in professional surroundings. These are challenging times, and so I'm hoping what you get from this is a bit of an insight into how business and government can work together. And I couldn't agree more with what John Allen said. You know, there is wasted potential out there. There has to be trust on both sides. There has to be respect. But we can do this. And the great thing is it makes a difference to New Zealand. We're a small country. We can do it, but we've all got to do it together. Can I just end with some sound advice from someone who I think is an absolute expert on all these matters? And that is, of course, Sir Humphrey. It is axiomatic in government that hornets' nests should be left unstirred. Cans of worms should remain unopened and cats should be left in bags and not left loose amongst the pigeons. Boats should definitely be left unrocked. You must refrain from taking bulls by the horn and resolutely turn your back to music. In other words, when working with government, the no surprise policy works best of all. Thank you. Well, that was excellent, and I'm going to have to add to chapters 5, 6, and 7 in the light of that.